The term hormonal is often associated to being moody, but our hormones affect so much more than just our moods. These vital chemicals allow our bodies to function properly. They enable reproduction, movement, and so much more. When they're not functioning as they should, it affects our daily living and can lead to a number of diseases. On the program today, we'll talk about hormones and their role in our body, what happens when we have an imbalance, and the best ways to maintain healthy hormone levels. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk, only on CNN Philippines. Our bodies contain over a hundred chemicals or hormones that help us function as we go about our daily routines. Now our guests are here today to tell us more about the role of hormones in our body and how we can keep our hormone levels in check. With us is Dr. Celeste Ong Ramos. She's an endocrinologist from the St. Luke's Medical Center in Quezon City. We're also joined by Dr. Mia Fojas, who is an endocrinologist as well from Manila Med and the past president of the Philippine College of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism. Now to better understand how our hormones work, it helps to know how the endocrine system functions in our body. Now, Dr. Celeste, please tell us more about this, our endocrine system. So basically, so our endocrine system is composed of our hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, adrenal gland, ovaries, testes, and of course our pancreas. So basically, they work hand in hand, okay? So the organs have to secrete hormones, or we call it chemicals. So they send signals to be conveyed to the different parts of our organ to to have them proper function. So each organ will have a very specific function. Ngayon, Doc Mia, please explain what exactly are there. Ano ba itong mga hormones na palagi natin naririnig? The hormones function initially even sa conception, no? So, paano tayo nabuo, no? Tapos, and then in the womb of the mother, that yung growth ng fetus, andyan yung hormones. Tapos, it also govern kung magiging babae o lalaki ang baby. And merong isang trigger. Kasi usually, yung conception is female usually, and then my trigger para maging phenotypically male ang baby. So, ayun, sa growth pa lang, and then later on, nade-develop, nagkakaroon ng mga yung thyroid gland para yung child eh, mag-grow, tapos yung growth hormone galing sa mother and then sa child. So, marami, no? Even us, as adults, when we wake up, that's hormonal because meron tayo yung melatonin na tinatawag galing doon sa pineal gland natin. So, waking up and sleeping cycles also affect our stress hormones and a lot of other things like in digestion, everyday activities, definitely my hormone. It makes us survive. Now, I'd like to ask Doc Celeste this time, because ano, earlier you mentioned that hormones are responsible for sending signals to different parts of the body. Let's explain to our viewers what type of signals do they send and what is this in relation to, let's say, the mood a person exhibits? So, there are different types of glands, diba? Right? So, that different glands, that specific gland, like for example, so for our pituitary gland, so it will release yung thyroid releasing hormones, and then that will send signal to the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormone. So, sometimes uh, we know more about the uh, hyperthyroidism, just to give you an example. So, hyperthyroidism is caused by excess thyroid hormones in our body. So it will manifest with sometimes heat intolerance, mood swings, irritability, or laging mainit yung ulo nila, or it can be accompanied by palpitations, tremors, weight loss. On the contrary, if the thyroid gland is not functioning too much or not producing too much thyroid hormones, then it will cause hypothyroidism. So you will have like opposite of the hyperthyroidism. So you will have like cold intolerance, parang laging inaantok, Siya, so it affects the mood, no? parang gusto lang nila, tulog lang sila, or parang ayaw nilang bumangon. So basically, yun yung common na uh, nagiging manifestations nila with regards to the mood. No? So may mga mood swings din talaga. So when there is hormonal imbalance. Now, Doc Mia, let's talk about some of the most vital ones para sa ating mga viewers. Let's just talk about three, some of the most important ones. Let's talk about cortisol, let's talk about insulin, let's talk about the thyroid hormone. 
yung first, yung pinaka, siguro sa amin, mga endocrinologist, pinaka-importante ang cortisol because this governs a lot of organ systems, no? So, yung cortisol, yun yung tinatawag na main steroid. Yung steroid, medyo nabili tayong steroid sa ating katawan. And without this, babagsak ang blood pressure natin. But also, because of cortisol, yan yung tinatawag nating stress hormones. Without cortisol, hindi tayo makaka-adequately respond sa ating stress, no? So, with increased stress, tataas dapat ang cortisol. So, yung energy system natin maglalakad agad. So, tataas ang sugar, yung blood pressure natin medyo tataas, bibilis yung tibok ng puso para yung katawan natin mag-respond agad kung ano man yung stress na inihaharap sa atin. Dok Mia, let's talk about uh, the insulin and let's talk about the, the thyroid hormone real quick. Without insulin, hindi makakapasok yung blood sugar natin sa ating mga tissues, sa ating muscles and fats. No? Sa so, insulin, it's actually a key so that your sugar gets into your uh, body properly for us to utilize as energy. And the thyroid hormone, ayan, yun yung nagpapabilis o nagpapabagal ng ating sistema sa katawan. So it actually increases our heart rate, our metabolic rate kung mataas or kung kinakailangan ng thyroid hormone at saka pinapabagal niya kung medyo kailangan ng katawan na pabagalin. Yes, yeah, so those are just some of the more important hormones that our body has and it's also important to keep them at normal levels because when our hormone levels are too high or too low, it can affect our daily living. We'll talk more about that when we return. We're your partner in healthcare, so keep it here on MedTalk Health Talk. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk. Our hormones are chemicals that allow us to carry out our daily functions. They do so by sending signals to different parts of the body. But sometimes these hormone levels can get too much or there may not be enough of that. So Dr. Celeste, let's go through some of the causes ng pagkakaroon ng imbalance of these hormones. So yung mga more common, no? so one, pwedeng hereditary siya, like for example, for the thyroid conditions, misal namamana yung lalo na yung mga pagiging hyperthyroid, no? common kasi yan sa mga kababaihan, and of course, pag may family history tayo, so one, pwedeng nasa genetics natin. The other one naman, of course, pwede rin siya yung dahil sa pwedeng inborn, pag nung pinanganak sila, nagkaroon ng mga congenital developmental, no? like for example, yung mga dwarfism, so pinanganak sila, medyo may kakulangan sila sa growth hormone na deficiency. The others naman, of course, yung mga endocrine disruptors. So when you say endocrine disruptors, nung pinagbubuntis pa lang yung mga BB, minsan yung mga mothers na exposed na sila dun sa mga chemicals like mga pesticides or yung mga plastics or yung mga laging nasa na mga microwave kaya usually isa din yun sa mga resources kung bakit nagkakaroon ng mga endocrine abnormalities. No? And then of course, pwede rin yung mga medications. There are still medications that can affect our hormone production. No? So, kaya madaming factors that can really cause yung mga endocrine abnormalities natin. Now, we also mentioned that diabetes can occur when our insulin levels are interrupted. Pag-usapan naman natin yun, Doc Mia, could you please explain this further for our viewers? Because diabetes is so prevalent here, dito sa Pilipinas. Insulin is a hormone that functions like a susi. It's a key para makapasok ang sugar natin sa ating bodily tissues like the muscles and to store yung sugar as energy in fat cells, ganon. So, without the insulin, your sugar will remain out there and damage different organs like your kidneys, your eyes, of course, your heart. Kaya yung iba, lumalaki yung puso, nagkaka-heart failure. Yung iba, mas madaling nagkakaroon ng stroke or high blood kasi nagiging sticky yung tinatawag na cholesterol mas madali silang nag-attach doon sa ating blood vessels kaya mapapansin niyo maraming may diabetes na mataas pa yung cholesterol at madaling nagkaka-heart attack 
o kaya nagkaka-stroke. By now, our viewers really know the importance of having well-regulated hormones sa ating katawan. Now, we've been talking about hormones and how it affects adults in general. Now, let's talk about a hormonal imbalance and how it affects a child because growth hormones are vital in a child as they develop. However, there may be factors that can lead to a deficiency, causing them to be stunted or short for that matter. Now, Doc Mia, tell us, what exactly are growth hormones and what are some of these factors na nakaka-apekto, lalo lalo na sa mga bata. Importante siguro sa mga parents or wannabe parents sa uh, information na to. Let's go. The, the mas basic doon na. Growth hormone, of course, it functions to make our children grow. Uh, also, it has other functions sa mga adults. But since you introduced the topic on children, no? growth hormone makes your child grow up. So it's uh, for the development of the bones and other organ system. But mainly, since we're talking about the short stature, no? growth hormone, tumataas siya sa mga bata. Yung spurts, no? lumalabas siya sa blood ng bata pag natutulog sila. So, ang growth hormone deficiency happens usually if there is a genetic problem sa bata. So, hindi yan ganun ka-common. However, merong kailangan din detect yan early on kasi kasama yata yan sa neonatal screening para as early as possible, mabigyan ng bata ng injections ng growth hormone. Pero yung iba, na late na da-diagnose, nakikita na lang nila. Parang hindi ganito katangkad ang asawa ko or ako when I was growing up tapos may delay yung bata. So, merong iba't ibang kaakibat na genetic problems usually pag may growth hormone deficiency and they have to consult their pediatric endocrinologist for this to be screened. We've been talking about uh, the roles that our hormone plays in our body and having irregular levels can be harmful and cause a number of hormone-related illnesses. Now, Dr. Celeste, let's talk about this. Some of the conditions here that are mentioned is depression, obesity, or yung pagiging overweight. Let's talk about depression and obesity. How can hormonal changes, hormonal imbalances cause depression? So actually, uh, there are different reasons kung bakit nagkakaroon ng depression. No? So one, pwede siyang, uh, it can be part of being hypothyroid ng patient. So kasi hypothyroidism can cause depression, it can also cause weight gain. So pwede rin siyang maka factor for the obesity. The other endocrine the disorder that can cause both depression and obesity would be, of course, kung meron tayong tatawag namin, Cushing syndrome, which is excess yung cortisol production in the body. So either may problema siya sa adrenal gland or sa pituitary that causes the excess cortisol, it can cause weight gain and it also cause depression. And then, of course, indirectly, once you have, sometimes when you have patients na uncontrolled yung diabetes nila, usually sila yung mga obese, no? sometimes meron na rin sila, nagkakaroon na rin sila ng mga uh, mental health issues like depression. No? So, um, kaya madaming endocrine cause that can manifest both with obesity and depression. A lot of people might be watching this and say, I'm overweight. Uh, I've been trying to lose weight, but uh, hindi nangyayari. I might have a hormonal problem. How common is this, uh, Dr. Celeste? Uh, talk about this a little bit more for our viewers. Yeah. So usually we have a referral, no? So kasi tagal na lang nang try mag weight loss and then nagte-try na rin sila ng different um, diet strategies, especially yung mga nagte-try na ng different exercise regimen and then to find it out lang pala na meron pala silang hormonal problem. It's not that common kasi uh, siguro in reality in my practice baka 1 to 2 lang yung nakikita ko nagpapa-check up because of weight, no? But for, for those patients, no? So we have to screen them. So we screen them for TSH, so we check for their thyroid hormones, we check for their cortisol as well. So that is a part of the guideline for managing obese patients. No? Okay. Especially kung sasabi nila nagda-diet naman sila and yet they don't get their weight loss target. Fortunately though, there are ways to manage our hormones. When we return, we'll talk about treatments or management uh, styles that you can do if you're having problems with your hormones and tips to maintain your endocrine system being normal and healthy because your health is our mission here on MedTalk Health Talk.
I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to Med Talk Health Talk. Our hormones help us do it all. Reproduction, movement, stress management, and much, much more. Now, their levels are affected when we go through bodily changes like puberty, menopause, and even pregnancy. But sometimes, lifestyle factors and illnesses can keep them either too high or too low. Doc Mia, let's talk about that. First, let's talk about how a hormone problem is properly diagnosed. There's either a hypersecretion or undersecretion. So, yung ang maganda kasi sa ating endocrine system, meron siyang tinatawag na feedback mechanism. So, normally, pag ang feedback ay normal, so, kailangan pag may oversecretion, magsisignal, let's say, sa brain na, ay, ang dami ko nang sinesecrete. Sasabihin ng brain, okay, bawasan natin ang secretion mo. So, kasi yung central gland talaga for governing the release of these hormones would be coming from the brain. That's what you call the pituitary. Now, how do we diagnose hyper or under secretion? It is actually based on yung feedback mechanism. Halimbawa, kung sa tingin namin mataas ang cortisol ng isang pasyente o mukha siyang tinatawag na Cushing's, no? Cushing's disease o kaya Cushing syndrome o nache-check namin kung gaano kataas yung cortisol niya. Ngayon, kung minsan hindi namin agad na detect doon dahil may ibang tumor pala na nagkakosot, che-check namin yung hormone na nagpapa-release ng cortisol. So, medyo may kamahalan ang pagpapa-work up nitong mga hormones na to because these are actually special tests that hindi yan nade-detect agad sa ordinary annual physical examination. The endocrinologist has to be astute enough to recognize which hormones to work up. Reminder to our viewers, if you think you have a problem with your hormones, it's best to go to a doctor who is very well trained and adept with your endocrine system. Now, Dr. Les, pag-usapan naman natin kung ano ang treatment usually kapag isang tao ay na-diagnose with a hormonal problem. Usually here on the show, we talk about medical management, gamot, iniinom, or surgical management. Are both types treatment option for those with hormonal problems? Pag-usapan muna natin yung gamot, which is more common pala uh, among the two. So usually we do surgery for those cases na sa pituitary gland like for example may tumor sila doon yung tinatawag naming adenoma and we found out that they are producing too much hormones then we offer surgery. Uh ganun din ang ginagawa natin for like for example sa adrenal gland pag meron tayo doon nodule or mass na sa adrenal gland natin that produces excess adrenal hormones that causes uh, excess BP elevation no yung talagang nagsu-shoot up yung blood pressure then we offer definitive treatment or definitive will be the surgical treatment tanggalin yung adrenal gland na yun or adrenal adenoma para hindi na siya magproduce na excess hormones. But then again, pag hindi sila amenable, we try to give medical treatment. Okay? Kaya lang po yung sagot depende siya sa specific condition. Doc Mia, pag-usapan natin yun. Can you give us some tips or on how to achieve this? For those who are watching, how can I maintain my endocrine system uh, just like any other system in my body? How can I keep it healthy? Magkaiba yung babae sa lalaki. But in general, ha, you have to be careful of the supplements that you are taking because a lot of these, let's say, supplements, vitamins, will definitely affect your hormones. So, hindi tama na lahat idadaan sa ating multivitamins. So, kung ano lang ang kulang, yan ang ipoprovide natin to maintain your healthy hormone. Keep yourselves healthy para hindi po agad na magkaroon tayo ng complications related to pagbagsak ng mga hormones na to. So that was very important tips. Doc Mia, thank you so much for that. Now there's so much more to know about our hormones. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. But if you have any more questions, please have a friendly chat with your doctor. Talk to your endocrinologist and find out if you really do have a problem with your hormones. With that, thank you very much, Dr. Celeste Ong Ramos and Dr. Mia Fojas for being with us today, sharing your information, your valuable information with our viewers. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and thank you for watching Med Talk Health Talk. We'll see you again next time.